Good morning and welcome to Golf Square Live. I'm Robin Kingham and today I'm joined by Daniel Braley. Uh, and today we are discussing coronavirus, uh, as it seems is everyone at the moment. Uh, in fact, uh, just this morning I saw a, a report from the BBC that a young boy had been sent home from school for selling hand sanitizer for 50p a squirt. Sounds like good value, Robin. <laughs> well, I mean, certainly if he had taken some formal advice from a member of Goff Square Chambers, he might not have been sent home. Yes. Um, so we're here today to help any of the rest of you who might also find yourselves in a similar position uh, and help you to avoid getting into trouble during this coronavirus outbreak. And in particular, we are discussing sales and pricing practices uh, in the context of that outbreak. Uh, now, Daniel, I believe you're going to be covering, uh, in particular, the CMA's recent statement uh, on pricing during the coronavirus outbreak, uh, misleading claims and unfair pricing practices, uh, amongst other things. Um, as some of you uh, may be aware, we've been having some technical problems uh, broadcasting live this morning, and we apologize for that. Um, so as a result, this video is being recorded and will be uploaded later on, uh, hopefully today. Um, if you are watching this, then I'm afraid you can't pose questions to us live as we would usually do, but please do uh, feel free to email either Daniel or myself. You'll find our email addresses on Chambers' website, on our uh, bio pages, and we'd be very happy to answer any questions that you might have on this topic or in fact on uh, any consumer law topic. Um, so with that, I will hand over to you, Dan. Thank you, Robin. Well, as of 9 a.m. yesterday morning, over 27,000 people have been tested in the UK for coronavirus, of which 456 people have been confirmed positive and six have sadly died. At this stage, the government are apparently planning for all eventualities and businesses have been advised to put contingency plans in place. The World Health Organization has declared that we're experiencing a public health emergency of international concern, and the UK's chief medical officers have now raised the risk to the public in the UK from low to moderate. At an individual level, the pandemic clearly has the ability to cause considerable distress and concern, even panic. A short walk around uh, my local Sainsbury's last night brought home to me, at least, the extent of panic buying in my area. There was literally no pasta, no toilet paper or hand wash to be seen. Good thing we had got plenty of stocks and chambers there, Robert. <laughs> uh, in response to panic buying, I understand that a number of supermarkets are planning to or have already imposed a cap on the number of certain items which consumers are able to buy. For example, uh, toilet paper or hand sanitizer. Of course, stress or panic can be also be a source of consumer vulnerability. And where there is vulnerability, there is often someone, unfortunately, willing to exploit it. Can I have a slide one, please? To this end, on the 5th of March, the Competition and Markets Authority, the CMA, published a statement in which they confirmed that they are monitoring reports of changes uh, to sales and pricing practices as a result of the coronavirus outbreak. The CMA have urged retailers to behave responsibly throughout the current situation and not to make misleading claims or charge vastly inflated prices. And I will deal with each of those two points separately in turn. So if I could have my second slide, uh, we're going to briefly look at misleading claims. Traders must now, as always, be careful about making representations which they cannot back up or which are plainly misleading. For example, in this context, companies selling surgical face masks should avoid claiming that they can protect the wearer from becoming infected uh, with the virus, when in fact this might not actually be true. The law in this area is primarily set out in the Consumer Protection from Unfair Trading Regulations 2008, 2008 um, CPUT for short, as we call it in Chambers. Uh, the regulations provide that a trader commits an offence um, where they engage in a commercial practice, which is a misleading action, for example, in relation to the characteristics, price or features of a product, and which causes the average consumer to make a transactional decision which they otherwise would not have made. Uh, see in particular Regulation 5, which is made a criminal uh, offence by Regulation 9 of CPUD. Equally, 
misleading omissions, namely the failure to provide information which the average consumer would require to make an informed transactional decision, may give rise to an offence. The CPIP regulations uh, require traders to ensure that consumers are not treated unfairly by reference to the standard of the average consumer. However, it is important to understand that the characteristics of the average consumer may include vulnerability. Uh, see in particular Regulation 2.5 of CPIP. Now, vulnerability may be linked with certain characteristics, such as age, which is obviously particularly relevant in the context of coronavirus, where the mortality rate appears to be much higher amongst the elderly and equally those with underlying health conditions. Therefore, special care must be taken uh, in respect of promotions which specifically target the elderly or those with underlying health conditions to, uh, to make sure that traders don't mislead. Um, now, of course, it's possible that there may also be some overlap uh, in this area with food safety provisions, uh, food safety, nutrition and labelling requirements. Uh, for example, in America, the Federal Trade Commission and the Food and Drug Administration have issued, a warning, have issued warning letters to seven sellers of unapproved and misbranded products, claiming that they can treat or prevent the coronavirus. Uh, these companies' products included teas, essential oils and uh, chemicals containing colloidal silver. Um, it was claimed that this, in, in essence, could cure the coronavirus, which clearly is, is not correct. Um, now, we haven't seen any instance, instances of that in the UK yet, but I have no doubt it will not be long before we see something similar. Now, we don't have time in the context of this short uh, session to delve into the legislation in any detail, um, but relevant food authorities may wish to turn their minds to the primary legislation in this area, namely the Food Safety Act 1990, and indeed supporting regulations such as the Food Safety and Hygiene Regulations England, uh, so England Regulations 2013. Uh, in addition to the above mentioned requirements, um, can traders <clears throat> will find helpful guidance in respect of price promotions specifically, such as sales, uh, discounting, reference pricing, in the Pricing, Practicing, uh, Pricing Practices Guide, the PPG published by the Chartered Trading Standards Institute. Now, of course, um, this guidance is not binding on traders, but it's certainly indicative of the type of behaviour which is more or less likely to be considered misleading. Um, as a starting point, for example, traders should not be making any promotional claims um, during this outbreak, such as 50% off or um, antibacterial gel is sold for a limited, uh, uh, limited one-time offer at this price if there's simply no evidence to substantiate that claim. Uh, and that's the important point here, that any promotional claims need to be backed up clearly with evidence. Um, in summary, traders will need to give careful consideration at the moment in respect of the ways in which they purport to promote products, in particular products related to the, co to the coronavirus and in particular products which are specifically targeted at the, the elderly or those of underlying health conditions. Um, if they are going to make any claims in respect of the capabilities of these products, then they need to be able to back up those claims or potentially with sanction from local trading standards or, or from indeed the CMA. If I can add my third slide, please, Simon. Um, enforcement. Now, Regulation 19 of CEPA places a duty on every enforcement authority to enforce the consumer protection regulations. This includes both the CMA and local weights and measures authorities. Regulation 19.4 of CEPUT states that in, determin in determining, determining how to comply with its duty of enforcement, every enforcement authority shall have regard to all the circumstances of the particular case. Um, of course, the CMA also has powers under the Enterprise Act 2002 to seek undertakings from traders in relation to unfair commercial practices. Uh, again, we don't have time in the context of this session to go into, into any detail, but Robin and I will be available after this session to answer any questions you may have in that regard. Um, if I can have my fourth slide, please. Um, unfair pricing. In the recent statement, the CMA have said they want to stop traders from charging customers excessive prices for items such as hand sanitizer or face masks. Now, the CMA cannot introduce general pricing controls, but the announcement does indicate that the CMA, where they do not have relevant powers, may ask the government directly to implement direct action in this case. Now, I'm not currently aware of any announcement by the UK government that they intend to regulate pricing of these products, but obviously that is a, an interesting space to watch. 
In fact, we've actually seen similar patterns across Europe. In France, for example, there's been a, a surge, a recent surge in the price of alcohol-based hand gels. And this has led to the Minister for the Economy to ask the French equivalent of the CMA to open an investigation into the pricing of these products. Now, of course, um, whilst the CMA is not a pricing uh, regulator in, in the context of consumer protection, the consumer protection regulations do require that traders behave professionally and responsibly in the pricing of their products. And pricing practices should be formulated in accordance with honest market practice and the general principles of good faith. Uh, this obligation is, of course, derived from the, prohibi the prohibition against contravening professional diligence, which is set out in Regulation 3.3 of the secret regulations. Uh, now, as I said, this, this requirement primarily relates to statements about prices rather than prices charged. Um, the CMA have also made an interesting point in their statement about the role of individuals and how they may inadvertently become traders. So going back to the panic buying at my local Sainsbury's, as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, um, there will be some people, obviously, who are not panic buying, but are in fact bulk buying with a view to selling products onto other people down the line in order to make a profit, so presumably at uh, inflated prices if a, short, a shortage emerges. To these people, the CMA have expressly stated that consumer protection provisions may apply to them. Indeed, the definition of trader of a trader in Regulation 2 of the secret regulations is broad and will include any person acting for purposes relating to that person's business. Now, if an individual is bulk buying with a view to making profit, it is arguable that they may well be acting as a trader within, within that definition. Um, so individuals must also be mindful not to, um, to mislead consumers as stated above. Um, briefly, in the time that we've got, I've managed to find an, uh, another couple of examples of um, how consumers may be exposed to fraudulent trading and or fraud in the context of the coronavirus outbreak. Um, the Irish Garda, the Irish police, have warned consumers about the possibility of phishing or cyber fraud attacks. Uh, phishing, of course, is where a company or person receives an unsolicited email, text or WhatsApp message or telephone call claiming to be from a legit legitimate organisation. These communications might, for example, contain then contain an attachment uh, which, for example, links to or, or offers vital information about the COVID-19 virus. And it may ask victims to enter email login details to assess this vital uh, to access this vital information or even prompt the receiver um, to open an attachment. Now, in both scenarios, it's possible that this might lead to malware or, virus, uh, or a virus infecting the consumer's computer. And this, of course, may lead to passwords being stolen uh, and indeed personal information. Now, the best advice for consumers at this time appears to be to avoid opening attachments in unsolicited emails and to ensure that their computers have the most up-to-date antivirus software installed. Um, other examples of potential scams that I've managed to find are social engineering scams. Now, this might include, for example, where a person pretends to represent a local charity, uh, perhaps a charity um, that is working to find a cure for coronavirus, and they may ask for money to help fight the coronavirus. Now, in, clearly, the, 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 these may be bogus, and consumers should be wary of any unsolicited requests to pay money. Uh, finally, uh, there may simply be cases of fraudulent selling where, for example, someone um, offers to sell hand gel or face masks online, they take the money from consumers and then simply don't deliver the goods. Um, that would be a clear example of, of fraudulent trading. Now, in conclusion, there are, will inevitably be, there will inevitably be attempts uh, to exploit the public's growing concern about the coronavirus. Clearly, the CMA is alive to this, and it will be interesting to see if any prosecutions follow from this in due course. Um, hopefully, there won't be too many, but, but of course, time will tell. Um, ordinarily, we would now set aside some time for questions, um, but as, as Robin already mentioned, um, we haven't been able to record this live. <clears throat> so if you do have any questions about any of the um, matters that we've covered today, by all means, uh, do email Robin, or either Robin or, 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 or me in Chambers. Um, I think all that leaves is for us to sanitise our hands, Robin, and close <laughs> off. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks.